Hi, I'm Jake Burkett from Grey Alien Games, and it's the weekend, so I'm doing retro stuff. And I'm using this old version of the Vice 64 emulator, and um, I'm going to explore a Zap cover disc number seven. Now, Zap 64 was a magazine that was around when I was a kid in the 80s, and I used to go and buy it from the local news agents and read all about com 64 games and it's recently had a revival in a sort of small format you can get every couple of months delivered and also um, an annual a large annual that i get as well um, but the small bi-monthly magazine comes with a cover disc and it's a zip file when you unzip it you get sort of two sides of a disc because you could have double-sided discs if you cut a notch in your uh, cheap one-sided discs and um, this number seven appears to have something else as well, which we can look at. Um, and they they have got two things, two PDFs that come with it. So I'll open this one up. So you can actually sort of print out your own disc cover if you've actually got a disc drive and discs. I don't have that, but so I'm just going to close that one down. And then there's a sort of read me telling you what's on there. But I'm actually sort of not going to look at that because I like to discover what's on there. A bit like going through a treasure trove. So um, let's go back to the 64 emulator. And the best way I found to sort of in load the main program, and I think it's the first program it finds, perhaps somebody in the know can tell me otherwise, um, is to use this auto start uh, option. Oh, before we start, by the way, I've got a USB joystick plugged in. And I don't know if you can hear this, but it's a micro switched Competition Pro sort of clone so here's the micro switches so it's a pretty decent old school joystick not analog at all and in settings um i've got that set up oh yeah it's unset since i played it yesterday so it's a good job i checked joystick port 2 speed link competition pro okay most games are port 2 some are port 1 What's kind of cool is you can go in and you can use Alt J in the um, in the emulator to just switch it to port one when you're playing. And then um, hopefully that will solve the other sort of games which don't use port two for some reason. Um, I just need to check that setup. Yeah. OK, they're all set up as joystick. So anyway, yes, to get the disk loading, I'm going to use auto start. I'm going to pick side. Oh, that's the previous one. I'm going to go to zap seven side one and then we'll wait while it does its stuff okay that loaded quickly i wonder if these numbers mean that they will load automatically when i press them that didn't happen with the last cover disc i had to manually search i'm going to press eight and see if the readme works wow insert disc side one and then press space Disk side one is in, so I'm going to press space. This is cool. The previous one never had a menu. You had to manually search for everything, which I was <laughs> researching how to do yesterday and actually what I was going to show in this video because it's kind of interesting. Previously, what would happen is when you auto started, um, it loaded yeah just one thing on the on the disk. And if there were several things on the disk, you had to go and find them manually and load them which required sort of arcane 8-bit skill. Well, this is taking a while to load. That's the thing about the Commodore 64 drive. The tape deck was obviously slow because it was tape, you know, five minutes plus for some games. And the disk drive was never that fast unless you got uh, an Epix a fast loader cartridge, which um, I do actually have for my 64. And I've got a ROM of it here, which I was going to show how that worked. Yeah, so every disc so far has come with one of these sort of text-based demo things um, with some cool music. You can press space. You can read about what's on there. Sometimes it tells you, you know, how joystick import two or whatever. Some instructions. Um, so that's cool. And then when you've gone all the way around, it just sort of goes back to the start. I haven't found a way to exit from this. Um, normally I just, yeah, like I press escape, space, nothing. So if I use Alt R, that will reset the 64 editor. There we go. 
and then I can do auto start again. Um, yeah. So I guess this menu system replaces searching. I'll just test it out by pressing one, see if this runs. Disk two, okay, then press space. So attach disk image in drive eight, which is your default one, default disk drive. So I'll put disk two in, press space, it's loading. I'm interested to know how long this takes compared to if I load it manually using the fast load cartridge. Maybe we can have a look in a minute. I should have timed this really. And I've already started it, but I will set up a timer on my phone. Maybe 10 seconds already passed a bit longer. Yeah, that's interesting because they could have put a special loader maybe on here, which maybe it has to be in hardware. But if all of the games, you can sort of compress them and make them load faster. That's what happened when I used to have a, a what was it? It was like an action replay cartridge. I had something called a freeze frame, which uh, actually had some kind of hardware bug in it, I'm pretty sure, because it, it didn't work in all scenarios it was supposed to. Then later on, I got an action replay, which was the sort of default standard for being able to sort of freeze a game, save it to disk and have it reload really quickly, often with these, you know, flashing lines that meant it was sort of turbo loading. But, you know, you see a lot of games even have turbo loaders on tape where I guess they're compressing and using the bare minimum um, amount of sound they need to get the data in. Because normally tape saving was really, really slow and atrocious. Wow, this is taking a while. I don't think there's any kind of fast load going on. Okay, so that took one minute 14, plus 10 or 20 seconds at the beginning. Looks cool. It's an interesting art style, actually. I've not seen it used like that. Well, right, I've got my joystick here. Let's press fire. Nothing. Space. Space. Space did something. It's often a bit weird you have to figure out with all these 64 games how to actually get into them. What difficulty? Yeah, I think a little easy. E. Would you like unlimited cash? Sure. Unlimited energy. Yeah, uh, that's a bit of a cheat, isn't it? I'm going to say no. Do I have a, whatever that is? No. That sounds cool, though. District number of bombs, super bomb. Wait, this seems familiar. I wonder if I've seen, played this or had a screenshot of this years ago. Right, does fire work? But surely it's a new game, right? I think everything on the Zap64 so far is new games. Though the last disc actually had a game that was written in the 90s by uh, Dev who passed away and some of his friends actually resurrected it and turned it into a, a game of Zap64, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this works, so I can walk around. Let's try whatever Tara is. Tara welcomes you. Hello. Wow, this is quite fancy. It's using, it's not using the normal Commodore 64 color mode where all of the pixels were fat, basically two pixels wide because you, you had up to four bits you could set colors with. So four colors, including a background or color. Um, but this is just two colors on and off. Now, can I shoot or something? Yes, okay, God, can I shoot these? Ah. Well, it's a teeny bit sluggish. I can only shoot up. It's a bit weird. Are these things... Are these things damaging me? Looks... I mean, why are they following me? They can't be friendly, right? Fire. What about fire? Nothing. Oh. I mean, that's a bouncing bomb. Problem is, there's no shadow, so I can't really tell can't really tell what's going on. Uh, 
No. And where I'm supposed to be going. You know what? I should have read those instructions <laughs> on the README. Okay, well, I mean, this game might merit some further investigation later. I'm going to reset and go back to the disk. Reset. Okay, so before there was a menu in which I could choose everything on the disks, um, I had to sort of manually um, query the disk, and it's a bit arcane. You had to sort of know this, <laughs> or you'd have no clue, right? You had to type load um, dollar, which means a listing, a, a directory listing, comma eight from drive eight. In fact, I'm going to go back to disk one. Disk one, here we go. So you load that in, load in directory listing, and then it still doesn't even show it. You have to type list. And apparently if you had a basic program in memory, this listing overwrote the basic program, which kind of sucked. Um, all right, so it lists like this. What they did in previous listings sometimes is these were really long for whatever reason. And oh yeah, look, if I use that arrow keys here to go up, you can't scroll up, right? So if you wanted to see what was at the top and, and it was listing, you had to press uh, run stop halfway through and break the listing. Okay. And then when you, you saw what you wanted to load, you could type in load, sorry, and uh, the file name and whatever here with comma eight on the end. But a trick is you can actually scroll up. Oops, that's the wrong key. What have I done? Oh no, I think I've opened the quotes and not closed it. The comma 64 is weird like that. If you open up quotes, keys start to do um, different things like this. Anyway, I'll close the quotes. Right. Sorry, a small side quest. So a cheat is instead of typing it all out down at the bottom, you go up to where you want, you type in load, you move across and you type comma eight, but you don't want this end bit. And then when I press enter, that will load the cover mount menu. It says loading. It's overwriting the text further down. It's taking quite a while. Ready. Okay, and then you actually have to run it by typing run. So that gets us back to this, right? Um, yeah, I'm gonna, it's quite a cool little demo actually. I'm gonna reset. Right, so I've reset. So yeah, that's one way you can load stuff manually. Um, now, the thing is, that sort of loading is really slow. So what I've got is a cartridge image here of the Epix fast load cartridge. And when I enable that, it says fast load um, there. And it's got several cool things, such as if I type this, I don't have to type the whole load, you know, dollar eight comma one, and it does that. The only problem with this listing, I don't know why, but if I do it again, I can't press run stop to stop it. So when it's really long, I can't break it. So I actually had to use the old load command to break it sometimes. But in this case, everything's where I want. Then you go up to what you want. And instead of typing in load and then sticking eight, whatever on the end, um, you just put a slash in like this and then that will load it, right? So. Occasionally, it doesn't work using fast load. Oh, and this is loading faster than normal loading. It still takes a while, but it's faster. There we go. Yeah, and if it doesn't work, then I actually have to go in here and detach the cartridge image, you know, reset and load it the old fashioned way. So let's see what number two is. That's spelled weird. Tutan calm. This game is a tribute. Okay, fine. Press fire. Well, let's see if joystick number two is. Yeah. Play. Difficult. Let's just. Yeah, the joystick operates the menu. Let's look at the credits. Luca Carminati. 
definitely admire these people who've managed to make Commodore 64 games in 2022. I would like to actually myself as a hobby project. Someday we'll see. I used to code in basic and a little bit in assembly on these. Right. Oh, I'm immediately dead. So, oh, okay. So it looks like I've got some kind of attack. Oh. I don't know if the attack is limited. I don't even know what it is. Oh, well, I'm so rubbish at this. Okay. <laughs> Let's try again. Yeah, let's go. Ooh, I got that one. What's this? Oh, a warp. Okay. Now I need a key. Yeah, this isn't bad. It's quite a well constrained little game. Um, oh, it scrolls. I'm impressed. Got some gems. Whatever that was is gone. There's a gem there I've, I've missed. Is this just a monster spawn hole? I think so. Is this a treasure? Yeah, a thousand. Looks like there's a... Ooh, oh, damn. I was trying to get down to that keyhole down there. I don't know why it spawned me there, but fine. It doesn't... I don't know if you can fire vertically, because if not, that's a bit of a bummer. Hmm. I'm desperate to get in that door. Ha, huh, got them both. A twofer, as they say. Okay, good. No, no, go down, down. Ah, this joystick is pretty awkward. I do sometimes wonder, even though it was like one of the best back in the day, I do wonder if I should uh, use keys. I mean, there was a reason the quick shot had suckers on the bottom so you could stick it down. Because with these other ones, you've got to sort of hold it in your hand. And when you tip sideways, yeah, I can't shoot down. When you tip it sideways, the whole thing goes over, right? So it's sort of enough to give you a strain after a while. Oh, yeah, teleport. Is that the teleport? No, down. Wouldn't go in there. Oh, that's not the teleport, is it? Teleport's up here. Let's down, down. Right. Yeah, I keep trying to press down and getting sideways. I think I've got to get better at using the joystick. Pick up this gem. Avoid that bat thing. Really? Well, okay. <laughs> That's enough for that for now. Doesn't seem too bad, actually. There's probably a lot more to it. Okay, I'm going to try and use fast load to look at disc two, the one that had Amarote on it, and see if it loads faster. Uh, side two, dollar. This looks like another example of a disc listing that's too long, right? Yeah. Cool pictures though, ASCII art. What they're doing now at least is putting all of the programs at the bottom, but before some of the previous discs, they were, you know, off the top, and that's why I had to break the listing. There's Amarote. I've got fast load running, so if I type slash, it should just load it. No, it, oh, I don't know if that's working. Okay, that didn't work because the blocks were greater than a single digit. This is the block size, I think, here, right? Zero, and this was a big game, so it's 159. So I'll delete those. This should work. Yeah, that's working. I'll start, I'll start a timer. I'll wait a bit long like I did last time. About 10 seconds, maybe. Let's start a timer now. See if it's faster using this mode. I think it's at least twice as fast. But it's not like 10 times. The last one took... Oh, it's already loaded. Okay, let's go down. That was like 10, 20 seconds, maybe. Yeah, there you go. So, you could use the main menu on these zap discs or load them manually much much faster which you know I was an impatient kid back in the day and sitting around waiting for things to load was pretty bad I'm gonna reset and have another look at what else is on here so yeah I would prefer manually querying the disc finding stuff and loading it like this 
it's kind of exciting. I know it's nice to have a cool menu, but if everything's loading twice as slow, then I don't know. I'll, I'll use this system. So readme. Yeah, probably. I'm going to have a look at that. Loading. Yeah, you can't type run on the same line. It's a shame. Actually, by the way, yeah, what's supposed to happen on this fast load cartridge is you can press control run stop. So I'll just show you something. If you do shift and run stop, that would automatically load something on, on tape, right? But I haven't got a tape, so I'm going to break that. And with these fast load cartridges, control run stop is supposed to load off of disk. But that, there looks like something wrong with that command or something. Oh, okay. It ran. Oh no, sorry, it didn't. That was running the README. Okay. Just having a look here. Blimey. It's a whole load of lore about the devs. That is quite the wall of text, guys. <laughs> okay. I thought it was like a read me, like how to play the thing. Probably it's pretty interesting if you're a C64 coder. I'm going to reset. Yeah, what I was trying to say is when you're here, you're supposed to be able to press control and caps lock on my PC, which is Commodore and run stop on the emulator. And it's supposed to auto load the first thing on the disk, I think, but it doesn't work. Uh, I don't know why. The reason it worked when I did it a minute ago is because I'd already loaded in the readme and the, the searching thing failed, but the run command ran the, the thing I'd already loaded. Anyway, what else is on this disk? I think Elysium 2022. I don't know what that is at the top. That might be just the name, the name of the disk. Unsure. Right. Anything else? Cover mount menu. Right. That's probably the same menu that was on the other disk then. So yeah, I'm going to switch back to the first disk. Um, let's have a scan of the contents. Star Marda demo. I want to try that. It's also something called Fame and it says SEQ. I've not seen that before. I don't know what that means. I mean, I could try to load it. Might be just data though. I doubt it will run. Let's just try with them. Um, file not found. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one. Yeah, so the number on the left, I thought that might be like number of blocks used, but one isn't many for a game or something. So I do wonder like where the rest of the data is stored. Star Marda, casual interplanetary genocide. It's got a manual. Do I need the joystick? Yeah, Can't, arrow keys don't work. It's funny, right? Because if I made a game like this, maybe it works with both joysticks, in which case, fine. A lot of games used to only work with one, but they didn't tell you which one. And on the title screen, I'd want to put joystick in port two. And also, you know, if, if you've got a menu like this, I'd want arrow keys to work and perhaps sp space to select but or enter. Just, you know, why not? Why not code it in? It's 2022 and three, so... Terrans. Oh, okay, this is like um, an ASCII art or Petski as they call it. Um, game. Press fire. Choose department. Military. Attack. Well, that's what they're for. No weapons built. Okay. Industrial. Build. Build more battleships. Fine. Well, okay. That's cool. Terrans build battleships. Exceptional effort. 
Grobots build battleships. Mutants build. Uh oh. Plotops. Plotops. Uh oh. Argo. What should we do? Politics. Propaganda. Orgy. Fine. Let's have an orgy. Wait. Terrans make love, not war. What did the others do? Hippies dump all weapons, oh dear. Robots build more battleships. <laughs> Mutants are attacking who? Us or one of the other planets? 90 billion robots die. Well, Plotops are attacking who? Oh no, there go the hippies. I'll go. Um, oh, I see there's a number above the planet for the population. Military. Can we attack? We've got none. Defend. Ion shield. We're a peaceful loving people with an ion shield. Terrans are defending. Oh, Grobots are making love. Well, that's because they've only got 10 million left or whatever. Or billion. Wow, they've improved their population. Did we do that? Mutants build battleships. Oh dear. Plotops. Terrans turn. Okay, we could defend again. I'm just going to keep defending for now. More Grobots. Hippies dump all weapons. We didn't have any anyway. Oh, it's, that was for them, right? It's mutants, Grobots, they're all dead. Minus 65, that's got to mean they're dead, right? Plotops. They're really going for it on the globe. Robots. Argo. Oh. What else is in politics? Propaganda. Choose a target planet. Mutants. Media war on the mutants. Terrans lie to mutants. Oh, they've defected. Okay. Mutants build battleships. You think they might try to wipe us out? Should we make some battleships? What does research do? Research new weapons. Terrans are doing science. Tech level goes up. Uh oh. That's it. Game over. Well, why is it letting us do stuff if we've got zero left? Um, we'll do the orgy thing. up 15 billion I don't I think would have thought zero was a difficult point to start from oh some backfired propaganda okay this is kind of cool I could keep going but I'm gonna stop for now and see what else is on the disc there was a lot on disc one basically um, Sever Wicked. All right. Let's have a look. Yeah. A lot of these Petsky games load quickly. Okay, so that's got some kind of compression. Sever the Wicked by Haplo. It's a preview. Let's give it a go. Destroy as many enemies as you can in 24 seconds. Further the enemy, the more points gained. Okay. Press fire. It's joystick port two. What? What? Oh, okay. So I just go around this border thing and shoot. Is that it? I think so. It's a bit like Vampire Survivors or something. Well, it's not automatic attacking. Kills 95, high score. Press fire. Will I get another go? I think it's just a really small game. The sort you'd get on a um, invader load, which was on tapes back in the 80s. Um, 
there was a Space Invaders game that you could play whilst other games were actually loading, which is pretty cool. And it also had Rob Hubbard music, so it was awesome. And then there were a few other types of games, or at least one other type of game you could play, where you went around the outside of the screen and shot things. A bit like a sort of Jeff Minter game. Okay, this is kind of weird, but you can't get some of them unless you're, I guess if you go diagonal. So you've just got to decide where you're going to get the most point shooting. Don't know what those other ones are. Is that my best? 95. All right, not bad. Now let's see what else, else is on the disc. Captain Ishtar. All right. Loading. Right, scroll down. Run. Okay, that's another form of compression. So that's been saved with a sort of freeze cartridge or something. All right. All right, okay. Shoot the UFOs. Don't know if I'm doing this right. It's not giving me any, any auditory feedback because of the cool music. I mean, I think that's a bullet. I'm not limited. What are these? Okay, I'm shooting those. Fine. Have I got health? It says four. Three. There's something flashing at the bottom of the screen. Okay, shoot the UFOs. No. What about that big thing? Look like a mothership. Okay, it says two at the bottom of the screen. Two what? Lives? Maybe that is lives. One. Soon find out. Yeah, I've got an auto fire on this joystick. Let's switch it on. It's not working. Sad. Oh yeah, I've got to hold the button down. Yeah, cool, cool. This is cheating, but that's easier now. God, yeah. Not having to spam the fire button. I thought there were clouds, but I think it's UFOs firing at me. I've got two lives now? I know it's tricky, but if they'd made one channel for sound effects, like just the, the um, white noise channel, that might have added a lot more to the game for me. Because I'm not getting you've been hit feedback or you hit an enemy. It's quite a big pause between aliens. To give you a breather, I guess. I did get the big thing. Nothing special. What are they? Jetpacks or something. Jetpack aliens. Uh, and then making use of the expanded sprite code. You can have a standard size sprite or double. I don't think you can have quadruple. I could be wrong. Oh yeah, see that's an expanded sprite. That's why it's mega blocky. Okay, got blown up. It's an old tradition to have good game over music as well in some games. Commando being the one of the best. All right, what else is on here? Uh, that was Captain Ishtar. I thought Ishtar or Ishtar was an old Amiga game. Uh, a Dungeon Master clone. Tasered. All right, this sounds interesting. Yeah, that last one kind of definitely had potential. I just desperately wanted sounds. There might have been an option on the main menu to switch sounds on and music off. That was often a thing on a Commodore 64. You had to choose another compressed file. Okay, these people did one of the um, 
one of the cover disc menus recently. Maybe they're publishers. Unknown. Yeah, you can't skip it. It just plays like a splash screen. Tasered in the crotch. Okay. Are you the taserer or the taseree? Quite an important distinction. Never mess with the law. <laughs> oh dear. Um, fire to play. Arrest robbers and not let ten escape. Try to avoid citizens. Robbers are citizens. Um, oh, okay. They're robbers, are they? Oh, I missed. Yeah, tasered. Got him. Try not to let 10 escape. What's this at the bottom? Oh, different cops with tasers. Got funny helmets on. That's a citizen at the top. That is a crim. Lives four, it says. Quota. Oh, down the bottom it says escape three, quota. Oh, I've got to still get 15 more. Okay. It's actually quite good fun. I've had sort of mixed results with these cover discs. Like some of the games just sort of aren't fun or are too sluggish. One of the key things for me is that a game feels responsive. Um, and this one does. Yeah, and I'm getting visual. See what they've done with the music? They've either cut out the music or reserved a channel for the sound effects. Maybe, maybe a bit of both, unsure. But I feel like I'm getting good feedback. Clearing the zone from villains. Yeah, it's got good music. I love it. Oh, a different scenario. Bridges. Yeah, it's just covering up a bit of the music with the sounds. But reusing one of the three channels, I think. Two voice channels and one white noise. So I think you could do extra weird stuff with some clever code. I've seen a thing with four channels before. A, a tune, some kind of maniacs of noise thing. Oh, nearly got a civilian then. Yeah, this is alright as an arcade game. I do wonder if there's any more complexity. Oh, oh no! What happened? Does that, that make me lose lives or what? Why well, have I only got one life now and I had four before? Is it because I was shooting civilians and not noticing? Oh, with the bombs. Okay. <laughs> that answered my question. You bumbling fool. You're not fit to serve the public. That's good. Come on. Yeah, okay. A simple game. But actually, cool. I mean, if there were power-ups, that would be good. Why is it gone black? It's not... Okay. Space bar for title screen. Great. Okay, reset. What else have we got? Yeah, that's a good one. Tasered high scores. Looks like it loads a separate EXE for that. Program. I mean, Gold Quest. Yeah, we didn't know what fame was, and that we know is the cover. So, Gold Quest. This is the last one. Yeah, I feel like I should enable keyboard mode and give that Toot and Calm game again. Another go again. Because I was just too bad at it. Run... Hang on, okay. Gold quest. Ooh. Hex of the Seven Dragons. Strike a key and let your quest begin. Oh, I pressed a joystick and it went here. What's thy name? Jake. Pick your dwarven character. Boozy. Oh, 
why are they all boozy? Sword plus five. Yeah, fine, all right. Wazd or joystick port two? See, this is good, it's telling me. Backpack, oh, I didn't get to read that. Oh, wow, it's a full on, oop, 3D maze thing. Fight or retreat? Do I press fire button? Fight. You are diff oh, I'm immediately dead. Orc moves on. No, it said I'm defeated in battle. Oh, okay, he didn't actually kill me, he just knocked 17 health off. Boozy, 0.97. Still don't know what that means. Gold, sword plus five, which I thought would at least get rid of the orc. Yeah, but look, it's a full on proper 3D sort of maze up there. Oh, I can rotate all the way around. Okay. What's north? We'll go there. It looks like some kind of... Why is it... Is that a wall ahead? Oh, I see. Okay. So on the map in the top left, we've got a grey area that you can walk into. There's a question mark there. What does this mean? Is there a button to examine it? Absolutely nothing in here. All right, tap fire. Let's go north. Keep walking or browse when doors. It doesn't say vendors. When doors, where's? Hatchet plus six. Gold six, I've got none. So keep walking. Warrior troops onwards. Oh no. We could fight again, see what happens. So strength. You're victorious. Fine. Do we get some gold? Gold plus one. Points 23. You frisk the dead orc and find nothing. More shopping. Keep walking. So now I get why it's called something gold or whatever it was called. Because you want to start with some. Is this a dead end? I can go. Oh, it's a tiny map that wraps around. Health. Impale. Oh, it's not health. It says plus two boozy. I wonder if it's because the player character is an alcoholic and has to. Oh, it looks like it gives you plus 20% health as well. Guzzle. That velvety aftertaste. Yeah. Maybe you're not supposed to go above a certain level of boozy. Trip of some nasty rubble. Great. What's this? Find four gold. Take it. This game's good. It's responsive as well. Uh, thy bet. Ooh. Let's gamble. Not all in. Two. What does this mean? Oh. Okay. And what's this? A door. Can we go in? Nothing in here. That's the current level. We went through the door. Depth one. Okay. Visit tavern. Health, boozy, gold. What's your fancy? Browse the shop. Play dwarven poker. I guess that's to get some money. Or oh, sit at a table and have a meal. Just browse the shop. A bit of pet ski art. Um, it's all too expensive. No thanks. Telly. Um, sit at a table. How much does that cost? Feast, drink, menu. Let's look at the menu. Health in every meal. 100% health. Okay, standard. So these give you booze levels, different booze levels. I still don't know what that does. I'm going to go for the standard because I've only got 39 health. Two gold. Eat like a pig. Down we go to depth two. Looks like it's a bigger map. I guess it's quite a big area for map. So absolutely nothing in here. I still don't know what that question mark means. Oh, stash. Stash the L. I don't know how to access the backpack actually. Oh, no money. Keep walking. 
I'm gonna need a better oh, okay that's all right nine I'm gonna need a better weapon stash guard toast to orcish beer try it dozes off this is good it reminds me of the game I made um, in Monkey and then I made a Flash version of it, which sadly won't run because Flash is depreciated. It's on my website under the Jam Games tab and it's called, um, uh, wait a minute, Dungeon. <laughs> I've forgotten the name of my own game. Um, but it's basically a roguelike game where you, it's a pun, and you explore and go to different pubs on the level you get a load of booze and then that unlocks the next level oh dungeon pub crawl i think that's what it's called something like that instead of dungeon crawl you know valiantly step into thorns great but yeah on my game you you kill enemies get gold and weapons and uh, you know, it's your quest is to drink in the pub on every level. Keep walking or browse. Okay, that hatch is slightly better. Magic map, I guess we're filling the map. ADTBM potion. Don't know what that does. Let's just get a slightly better weapon. It's a bit, it's not amazing, but okay. It's automatically armed it. So what's that, the way out? let's not go down there a gnome i don't need to do anything can i say no i don't want to exchange gold fight what steal is gold fine you fight bravely well i'm not sure attacking this little gnome is brave but i nicked all of his gold Um, is this a bit I already did? Do we, we're losing booziness as we do this. Yeah, as you walk around, okay, walk. We, we could, we're going to have to fight, I think. Victorious. Find nothing. Okay. And I've still got a couple of potions, so that's good. What's this? Fairy. Evil fairy. Name them. Why? Why? They're evil. I want more gold. Cries a curse. Gold minus eight. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's what happens when you make a deal with the evil fairy. Let's retreat. Oh, wow. Lost 23 health. So I think we can go down a level now. Yep. Depth two. Backpack contains. Does it get used up? Visit the tavern. A gnome waves at you. Okay. Six magic runes hidden in the dungeon. Go and find them. Rune word. Okay. Sure. And I'll wait for you in the pub at the end of depth four. Okay, what's your fancy? Could browse a shop for a change. Twin, uh, I could have bought this, but I'm not enough gold. If I hadn't um, tried to get gold off the evil fairy. Dwarven poker, let's give it a quick go. Your card, a three of diamonds, you bet one gold, fine. They hold nine, you lose, okay. Let's try again. An ace. Let's hope aces are high. I'm going to bet <laughs> all my gold. Yes! 12 gold. Could try that again. Three. It's rubbish. Can I not back out? I bet one gold. You lose. Try again. No one wants to play. <laughs> um drink let's go for a 
standard the menu what's feast okay this seems cheaper cheaper than the whole menu thing well I need 35 health so we'll do orc and mutton leg great okay well I think I'm going to end the video there and I might just keep on exploring this myself. Um, but basically, that's how you can load Zap64 discs, either using their now fancy menu system, which they didn't have before, or manually by going and viewing the disc contents. And then if you want to have a fast load cartridge, you can Google from where to find a ROM for that. Um, then you can basically load stuff extra fast, which is, you know, my preference. I'm a busy guy, etc. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.